This is the new 2022 Hyundai Accent, which I just got done reviewing. And so I will leave a link, of course, to this particular review at the end of this video. But as you guys may or may not already know, I recently got done reviewing the new Mitsubishi Mirage, which is also a subcompact and very similar in many ways to the new Hyundai Accent. For example, they both come with America's Best Warranty being five years, 60,000 miles, bumper to bumper, 10 year, 100,000 miles on the powertrain. They both, of course, are subcompacts and they both offer an incredible value as well. But that is not what this video is about. This is going to be highlighting the 10 key differences between both the 2022 Hyundai Accent and the new Mitsubishi Mirage. And so, in this video, I will be doing a countdown, working my way from 10 all the way to one with a clear winner at the end. So let me know what you guys think in the comments section below at the end of this video, which one you would pick. And having said that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and get started with number 10 on my list. All right, and so to start out this comparison here, I'm gonna start with the price comparison because this may be the most important comparison when you're comparing these two very affordable subcompact cars. And so let's start with the Hyundai Accent. That is going to be priced at $17,670 for that bottom trim level being the SE. And by the way, that price does include the destination charge. So I did wanna include that because it is going to be on the window sticker, so you might as well. Then taking a look at the Mitsubishi Mirage, that one is going to start at $16,290 for the G4 ES, G4 being the sedan version because the Mirage actually does offer both a hatchback and sedan form where the Accent only offers the sedan. But again, that does include the destination charge. So Mitsubishi Mirage is going to be less expensive between these two, putting us at a score of one to nothing. Mirage is in the lead. So next comparison, I wanted to compare the power differences between these two. And so the Hyundai Accent is going to come with a 1.6 liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder, putting out 120 horsepower at 6,300 RPM, 113 pound feet of torque coming in at approximately 4,800 RPM. Zero to 60 time for the Accent comes in at 8.5 seconds, which is plenty respectable for a subcompact. But then taking a look at the Mitsubishi Mirage, powering that little beast is a 1.2 liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder, 76 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, 74 pound feet of torque coming in at 4,000 RPM, coming in at a pretty substantial difference there. Zero to 60 time coming in at 10.6 seconds. So that's a pretty big difference, two seconds slower to 60. And so a lot of people will ask me, why is this so important? It might not be important, quite honestly, if you're just doing strictly city driving. But if you're like me and you constantly have to merge onto the highway through very short on-ramps here in Pennsylvania, you're gonna need a little quicker acceleration time in my personal opinion. So I will say the Hyundai Accent is going to win this one, putting us at a score of one to one. We are all tied up. Next on my comparison list and another one a lot of people are gonna be looking at is the MPG numbers. And so when it comes to the Hyundai Accent, miles per gallon come in at 33 in the city, 41 on the highway. Plenty respectable there. Mitsubishi Mirage comes in at 36 in the city, 43 on the highway. So Mirage is going to be more fuel efficient, not only in the city, but on the highway as well. And by the way, both of these take regular unleaded fuel. So that's the cheapest gas when you go to the gas station. So it's gonna be helpful as well. But overall, Mirage is going to win that comparison, putting us at a score two to one. Mirage is back in the lead. So next comparison on my list is going to be the rear legroom comparison. Hyundai Accent comes in at 33.5 inches. For reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is me sitting behind my own driving position here in the Accent. Then on the other hand, Miss Ambishi Mirage is going to come in at 34.2 inches. Again, me sitting behind my own driving position. Both of them on camera look pretty much the same to be honest, but that Mirage does give you a little bit more rear legroom. So gotta give this one yet again to the Mirage three to one. Mirage is in the lead. Next on the comparison here is going to be the tech, and this is always a big one for me. I'm definitely a big tech guy. Both come with analog gauges and plenty of charging ports. The Hyundai Accent gives you a five inch color touchscreen display for the SE trim level, actually that I'm showing you guys right now. And then a seven inch color touchscreen display for the SEL Unlimited, so the two trim levels above that. Android Auto Apple CarPlay then is only going to come on the seven inch color touchscreen display for the Hyundai Accent, so the top two trim levels there. Then when you're taking a look at the Mirage, there is actually a seven inch color touchscreen display that comes standard for all trim levels 
levels across the board. And so I actually had the bottom trim level here in the Mirage in this video, the bottom trim level for both vehicles. So it's a good comparison, but I did like seeing that. I didn't expect that. And actually Android Auto, Apple CarPlay comes standard on all trim levels as well with the Mirage. So that is definitely a good thing. And for that reason, Mirage is going to take the tech advantage in this comparison, putting us at a score of four to one. Mirage is in the lead. And so next on my list is going to be the safety comparison, a very important one, of course, because of course you want to be completely safe when you're driving in these cars. But Hyundai Accent is actually going to be an IIHS top safety pick if you were to go with the limited trim level only. Forward collision avoidance assist also comes with that LED headlights for the very top trim level only being that limited trim level. But then taking a look at the Mirage, it is not an IIHS top safety pick, and I'll explain why in a second here. But also comes with forward collision avoidance assist, also gives you LED headlights on that top trim level being the SE trim for the Mirage. But the reason being, the reason the Mirage wasn't a top safety pick is because of the small overlap front driver side crash test score, which was a marginal according to IIHS. So for that reason, it wasn't able to do that. So the Hyundai Accent is going to take the win because of that when it comes to safety, putting us at a score of four to two, Mirage is still in the lead. So next on my comparison is going to be the braking differences here. And so this one is actually pretty substantial. And so front disc rear drum brakes for the SE trim level that I was actually driving in this particular video. Four wheel disc brakes though, coming with the SEL and Limited. So I do like that that's offered. Producing a 60 to zero stopping distance coming in at 119 feet. So if you have to come to a quick stop on the highway, that is actually not too bad of a number right there. Very respectable. Then taking a look at the Mirage, front disc rear drum brakes for all trim levels across the board. There's no four wheel disc brakes offered with the Mirage, unfortunately. 60 to zero stopping distance coming in at 127 feet. And I strictly remember driving the Mirage and thinking it had one of the softest braking feels I've driven in quite a while. So definitely not a good feel to the braking in my personal opinion. You have to really stomp on it to make it come to a quicker stop. And maybe it's because of those front disc rear drums. But anyways, all in all, the Hyundai Accent is going to take the braking comparison, putting us at a score of four to three. Mirage still in the lead. And so next comparison, let's go ahead and take a look at this sound system. So it's going to be a little bit of a difference here. So I want to mention it. Hyundai Accent comes with four speakers for the SE trim and then six speakers for the SEL and limited trim levels. And so having said that, I always test out the sound systems in every review that I do. So let me pause real quick and let me play that clip of the four speaker sound system that we had in our SE trim here. But so then moving on to the Mitsubishi Mirage here, when it comes to the speakers, four speakers will come standard on every single trim level across the board. So yet again, let me let you guys take a quick listen to that sound system. So overall, since I did test four speakers in both of those cars, they weren't really all that great to be honest. But I will say the Hyundai Accent does offer a six speaker sound system. And I remember testing that in the 2021 Accent review that I did, but the Mirage does not unfortunately. So I gotta give this one yet again to the Accent, putting us at a score of four to four. It is all tied up with two comparisons left to go. And so next comparison, I wanted to have a little bit of fun with this one to be quite honest. It surprised me, and so I had to put it on the list. This is a fun one, and this is gonna be the exhaust note. And so I know it's not gonna be a big deal to everyone, but you gotta listen. So I do, of course, always do an exhaust clip, so let me play these two back to back and listen, and tell me which one you guys think is the better exhaust note in the comments section below. Let's do this. So in my personal opinion, after hearing those two, I think the Mirage has a much deeper exhaust note. It almost kind of sounded like maybe a non-modified Lancer Evolution or something from back in the day. It sounded wonderful. So this might be a little bit subjective, but not really. I think you guys would agree with me. And the Mirage is going to take the exhaust note comparison, putting us at a score of five to four. Mirage is in the lead with one comparison left to go. 
And so for our final comparison, I wanted to put the two side by side for interior quality. And so Hyundai Accent is going to give you a leather wrap shift boot. It's gonna give you four charging ports, including two 12 volt power outlets, USB port, auxiliary port as well. Also an overhead sunglass holder. And you do get some nice silver accents found around the air vents and also for the door handles on the interior as well. Then taking a look in the Mirage, there is no shift boot, unfortunately. It kind of looked like the automatic stick shifter from my old Infiniti G35. Two charging ports, then being a 12 volt power outlet, USB charger port, no aux port, unfortunately. No sunglass holder. And then for the door handles and around the vents and all the accent pieces were actually just going to be matte black accents. So pretty much like the rest of the vehicle so because of that because the accent does offer a good bit more when it comes to interior quality i'm gonna have to give that one to the hyundai actually putting us at a five to five tie at the end of this comparison. So I could keep going with these. For example, the Mirage offers a manual transmission where the Accent does not. However, the Accent does give you three years of free maintenance. You don't have to pay for the oil changes and tire rotations for the first three years or 36,000 miles. Mirage does not. Accent is built in Korea. Mirage is built in Japan. There's so many differences between these two. And so in the end, it does really come down to personal preference. And I think this may be the very first comparison video and I've done a good bit of them at this point that's actually ended in a tie. So help me out, you guys. Let me know what subcompact you would choose in the comments section below. I want you guys to debate it out in the comments because I always read your comments and I truly want to find out what everyone else does think between these two. And so both have nice features and it honestly just comes down to what you're actually looking for in a subcompact. And so that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it actually gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold